Psalm 121. If I lift up my eyes to the hills, I shall find the help that I need. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot stumble, for he who guards you will not sleep. The guardian of Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord is your guardian, your protector at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard you both now and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, in these moments we ask you to instruct and inspire us through the study of your word. Speak to us, for we are open to hear. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. On April 19, 1945, a new Broadway musical opened called Carousel. Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein wrote the musical as an adaptation of a French play called Lillion by Ferenc Molnar. The musical took the Broadway stage by storm running for 890 consecutive performances on its very first appearance on the Broadway stage. Rodgers and Hammerstein captured a wide range of human emotions in their musical, from great joy to times of extraordinary grief and loss, from those times when everything is well to those times when everything seemed to be going wrong. If you think back historically, the mid-1940s was a crucial time in the history of the world. The United States, of course, along with much of the rest of the world, was embroiled in World War II with hardly a person being unaffected by either the challenges or the sorrows that are inherent with war. The audiences that attended Carousel could not help but be touched and moved by a story of a young widow who suddenly was faced with the death of her husband as a result of war. His death meant that she would be raising their child alone. The casualties of war had created that same scenario in many, many homes around the world. People were able to relate to the story with great compassion. In the final scene, the recently departed father returned in the form of an angel, appearing to both his wife and daughter. It was his way of lovingly reaching out to them with some sense of hope for the future. The angelic father sang this familiar text. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver sound of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone. Did you hear the opening phrase? When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. If you've ever played on a sports team or if you've ever attended a sporting event where you were close enough to hear 
a coach give instruction or encouragement to the team, you will often hear the phrase, get your head up. I was watching a baseball game not long ago where one team was winning convincingly. Suddenly the momentum shifted and the team that had been losing came roaring back. It didn't take long to notice the visual change of confidence in both teams. The team that was surging had a bounce in their step with their shoulders back and their heads were high. Those players were eager to get on with the potential of winning that game. But in the other dugout, the team that was expected to win didn't look like winners at all. The players' heads were down. Their eyes were in the grass. The members of that team began to verbally attack one another as they started that attitudinal decline that inevitably precedes defeat. It was then that I heard the voice of that good coach. He said, get your heads up. It's not over till it's over. There's lots of game left to play. Get your head up. The coach was saying, change your point of view. Change your attitude. Get a new perspective. Remember how Psalm 121 started? I lift my eyes to the hills. For there will come my help. It's been a long time ago now. I was facing a difficult time, both personally and professionally. Choices needed, needed to be made. It was not the time to procrastinate. Life-altering decisions were unavoidable. A dear friend of mine and a pastoral colleague gave me a Bible. In actuality, it was the Bible that I read from this morning. Even though I have many Bibles in my library, this Bible remains a treasure for me because of who gave it to me. In each of our biweekly lunches, Dr. Bob and I would talk. We would consider. Consider together those possibilities and challenges that I was facing. He kept advising me to be careful, be very careful about the decision-making process so that every decision that you make is made thoughtfully rather than reactively or emotionally. Dr. Bob actually encouraged me to take a four-month study leave from my appointment at University Church. He believed that I needed a new perspective so that I could see things from a different vantage point. He encouraged me to take a three-month course in clinical pastoral education that would enrich my life and add depth to my ministry. Well, when I was chosen to be one of five students for the summer session at the University of Michigan Hospital, Dr. Bob wrote me a note of congratulation. I still have it. He ended the note by quoting from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills where I will find the help I need, he wrote. My help only comes from the Lord, for the Lord will not let your foot stumble. The Lord will guide you and guard you both now and forever. Well, changing perspectives was important for me. Throughout that summer, I discovered that almost every decision seemed to be a miraculous unfolding of God at work in my life. Help did come from the Lord. The guidance of the Holy Spirit was mine. 
1992, when Dr. Bob died, I stood over his lifeless body to say my goodbyes. I felt compelled to read a psalm. And I started to read Psalm 121. Little did I know that a few days later at his memorial service, his daughter read Psalm 121 as, his fa as her father's favorite passage of Scripture. Besides being a pastor, Bob was also a lover of sports and a coach at heart. Perspective was everything for him. I'm convinced that's why he loved Psalm 121. Lifting our eyes to the hills was an important image to gain a new perspective. So when a coach says, get your head up, that coach is challenging the team to refocus and see things from a very different vantage point. Getting a new perspective was probably what Rodgers and Hammerstein had in mind when they wrote, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. Even Jesus captured the image. Lift up your heads, he said, for your redemption draws nigh. Well, the text of Psalm 121 is part of a larger collection of psalms called Psalms of Ascent or Songs of Ascent. Part of the spiritual tradition of the Hebrews was to gather with a group of pilgrims and set aside a few days for spiritual retreat. One of the most popular retreats in their day was to climb the mountain or to ascend to the city of God, to ascend to the mountain of God. It was a unique pilgrimage right outside the city of Jerusalem. The people had the opportunity to gather and free themselves from the care of the world. And so those pilgrims would journey and they would sing songs of praise and they prayed for guidance, and they were surrounded by other people in that faith journey who were also seeking God. But as part of the spiritual discipline, when those people climbed the mountain in prayerful expectation, they would sing a responsive litany with the priest. So the priest would chant, I lift up my eyes to the hills. And the people would respond, from where my help comes? And the priest would continue, my help comes from the Lord. And the people would respond, maker of heaven and earth. And so it would go as they climbed the mountain to meet God. Preparation and expectation was building in the anticipation of meeting God, and the people rehearsed their faith line by line by line. One of my favorite books on the Psalms is a book written by Leslie Brandt entitled Psalms Now. Mr. Brandt interpreted the Psalms by reframing those ancient texts to be more applicable to the circumstances of our day. Listen to how he rewrote Psalm 121. Where should I look for help in my need? To majestic mountain peaks that probe our skies or to giants of industry that hem in our cities? To satellites that circle our world or to the computers that store up all sorts of knowledge? The answer to my problem and the fulfillment to my needs comes from God alone. From the one who created the skies and the mountains and all the people who dwell on earth. 
God is a great God who knows our every desire, whose watchful eye is upon us day and night. We can make no move without God's knowledge. God's concern for his children is constant. His love is eternal. And so the Lord will keep you, shielding you from the forces of evil as a shade tree shields you from the blazing sun. God cares for you, whether you be coming or going. God knows the course you take, and he will go before you. Where do you and I look for help in times of need? May I invite you, may I invite you to look to God, and by looking up, gain a new perspective. Because the Lord will not let our foot stumble. The Lord is our guide, our guardian. The Lord will guide you and me as we come and go, both now and forevermore. Thanks be to God for this timeless word of encouragement and instruction. Lift your eyes to the hills. Change your perspective on the challenges that are before you so that you can feel God's presence and guidance even in the darkest of times. God is there. You are not alone. Thanks be to God.